When most people hear the word graphite, they immediately think of pencils. That dark streak left on paper feels simple, almost ordinary, but graphite is anything but ordinary. It's one of the most fascinating materials on Earth, a substance that quietly bridges the gap between art, industry, and advanced technology. At its core, graphite is a form of pure carbon, the same element found in diamonds, coal, and even the human body. What makes graphite special isn't what it's made of, but how its atoms are arranged. Unlike diamonds, where carbon atoms lock together in an ultra-hard crystal, graphite's atoms form thin, flat sheets stacked loosely on top of one another. This unique structure is the reason graphite can be soft enough to write with, slippery enough to act as a lubricant, and strong enough to survive extreme industrial conditions all at the same time. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. To truly understand graphite, you have to zoom in to the atomic level. Each carbon atom in graphite bonds to three others, forming a hexagonal honeycomb-like pattern within a single layer. These layers, called graphene sheets, are incredibly strong in plane, but they're only weakly bonded to the layers above and below them. Because of this weak bonding, the layers slide over one another easily. That sliding is exactly what happens when you write with a pencil. Tiny layers of graphite shear off and stick to the paper. This same property also explains why graphite feels slippery to the touch and why it has been used for centuries as a dry lubricant, especially in environments where oils would burn, freeze, or fail. So something as simple as a pencil mark is actually a visible demonstration of atomic physics at work. Graphite's physical properties make it far more valuable than its humble appearance suggests. It conducts electricity surprisingly well, thanks to free electrons that can move across its layered structure. This makes graphite useful in batteries, electric motors, and electrodes. At the same time, it conducts heat extremely efficiently while remaining stable at very high temperatures. In fact, graphite doesn't melt under normal conditions. It sublimates, meaning it goes straight from solid to gas at temperatures above 3,600 degrees Celsius. Because of this, graphite is commonly used in furnace linings, crucibles, and high-temperature molds where most metals would fail. It's lightweight, chemically stable, and resistant to corrosion, making it an ideal material for harsh industrial environments where reliability matters more than appearance. One of the most interesting things about graphite is how often it is confused with other forms of carbon, especially coal or charcoal. While all three are carbon-based, Graphite is structurally and chemically distinct. Coal and charcoal are amorphous, meaning their carbon atoms are arranged randomly, which makes them great fuels, but poor conductors. Graphite, on the other hand, is crystalline and orderly, giving it predictable mechanical and electrical properties. This difference is why graphite is not typically burned as fuel, even though it technically can burn under the right conditions. Instead, its value lies in its stability, conductivity, and strength. In many ways, graphite is the engineered version of carbon, naturally occurring yet perfectly suited for precision applications. Modern technology has elevated graphite from an industrial material to a strategic resource. Lithium-ion batteries, which power smartphones, laptops, electric vehicles, and renewable energy storage systems rely heavily on graphite. In fact, the anode of most lithium-ion batteries is made almost entirely of graphite because of its ability to safely store and release lithium ions over thousands of charge cycles. 
As the world shifts toward electric transportation and clean energy, the demand for graphite has skyrocketed. This has turned graphite mining and processing into a critical part of global supply chains. Natural graphite is mined from the earth, while synthetic graphite is produced by heating carbon-rich materials to extreme temperatures, allowing manufacturers to tailor its properties for specific applications. Graphite has also played a quiet but crucial role in human history. It was first discovered in large quantities in England during the 16th century, where it was initially mistaken for a type of lead, hence the misleading term pencil lead, which is still used today. That discovery revolutionized writing and drawing, allowing for cleaner, more precise marks than earlier tools. Beyond art and communication, Graphite has been used in metallurgy, as a moderator in nuclear reactors, and even in aerospace engineering. Each of these uses relies on the same fundamental qualities, stability, conductivity, and resistance to extreme conditions. Few materials are so versatile while remaining so chemically simple. Perhaps the most exciting chapter in graphite's story is still being written. When scientists isolate a single layer of graphite, graphene, they unlock a material that is stronger than steel, lighter than aluminum, and more conductive than copper. Graphene research has opened the door to next-generation electronics, flexible displays, ultra-fast charging batteries, and advanced medical sensors. All of these innovations trace their roots back to graphite's layered structure. What once seemed like a dull gray material has become a gateway to some of the most cutting-edge science of the modern era. So, what exactly is graphite? It's more than pencil material. It's a naturally occurring form of carbon with a layered atomic structure that gives it a rare combination of softness, strength, conductivity, and heat resistance. It's a material that has shaped how we write, how we generate energy, and how we build technology for the future. From the simplest sketch on paper to the batteries powering electric cars, graphite is quietly everywhere proving that even the most unassuming materials can be absolutely extraordinary when you look a little closer. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.